show. Who spends most of her time in the kitchen, but never seems to know what's cooking. And then Baldwin saw the scintillating mirror of light dancing gaily in Valerie's eyes. It had not been there since the night of the Cambridge race, six long years ago. <laughs> Valerie's plan had worked. At long last, they had recaptured the essence of love. The end. Stop, you what do you think of it? <laughs> uh, I think that's the most beautiful story I ever heard. Yeah, well, I like that part about all love being a balance and new love cushion the stand. You know, leaning on the old and getting a bounce out of the new, that maritime problems are solved. It says there's some words on page five about the author. Charles Kenwood Ainsley, renowned novelist, world traveler, and authority on matrimonial problems. The story's all true, Oreo. Hey, you can't dream of stuff like that. <sighs> Mr. Ainsley says to watch close for the danger signs of marriage disintegration. Yeah, that's the busting up in the home. I assume that. Yeah. A, the casual peck on the cheek as though the kiss is a duty rather than a pleasure. Mm -hmm. B, the drifting apart from mutual interest, not listening while the other is talking. <laughs> C, in a turmoil as reflected by a gruff manner. You mean the way Bob was snapped at that little boy the day after the Cambridge race? Exactly. D, the husband wanting to stay in and forgetting that his wife spends almost all of her time in the home. Mm -hmm. If the reader knows a couple with a matrimonial problem, Mr. Ainsley wants their names. The information is confidential, and he'll send special instructions in a plain wrapper. <laughs> Welcome home, Mr. Harry. Oh, thank you, Viola. Oh, hello, Alice. Have a good day, Harry. So-so. In medieval days, up through the Renaissance, Alice, they used to torture a man with an iron collar. But iron doesn't cut as much as starched linen. So please, Alice, would you please ask... Please what, Harry? I, I wasn't listening. B. Not listening when the other one is talking. Back in medieval days... Oh, yes, the starch in your collar. I'm sorry, Harry. I'll try to remember to put a note on the bundle. No starch. Thank you, Alice. Hi, Bill. Hi, Donnie. Is dirt a collector's item, Donnie? Won't you let the other boys have any? Well, sure, Dad. You should see. I've already seen enough. Now, march upstairs and wash. But, Dad! March! Well, all right. But you don't have to snap at me. See? Gruff manner. Harry, there's a dance at the club tonight, and I promise... Not me, Alice. But, Harry, I promise... I'm staying in. After dinner, you'll find me right here. Dear. Bill, get up and go to work. I'm working, baby. Working? I'm inventing. Inventing what? Perpetual motion. Well, what's this? Reverse research? Listen, some water falls on a paddle. The paddle moves and generates the motor. The motor lifts the water. The water falls on a paddle. The paddle moves and generates the motor. The motor lifts the water. The water... <laughs> Oh, wait till I finish. The oh, water... Come on, Bill. 
There's some fixing to be done up to the Hendersons. Well, now, how much is in it for me? I'm doing the fixing. Well, you want to rent my tools? No. The tools I need are up here. Them, paper, pen, ink, envelope, stamps, and privacy. Bill, I just come over here because of the confidential nature of my work. Well, come on, sit down. I'll make the price right for you. You don't have to worry about nothing, baby. Well, let's get this stuff straight out here and I'll get it for you. Mm -hmm. Now, hold on there for me. Yeah, I got to fix these things. Mm, need sharpening. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. Now, look at that one draw here, huh? Oh, don't bother me, boy. It's all right, baby. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh. Need a button on it. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Things ripped right there, too, babe. Huh? It's okay. Uh oh. That's uh, all right. Here. There's the paper. Mm-hmm. That'll get it. With the understanding that this is confidential. Good morning, Mr. Saxton. Good morning, Dewa. <laughs> yes, Bill. A letter to Mrs. Henderson from you know whom. There's water and power. Second notice. And a plea from Donnie's Jet and Atom Club. He's delinquent. Is that all? There's a letter here in a plain wrapper. That's what I'm waiting for. It's addressed to a Mr. and Mrs. Henderson. But I sent in for it. I'd better warn you, Beulah, if anything has crossed the state line which hadn't daughter, it's a penitentiary offense. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Paxton. It ain't nothing illegal. I just performed the grand coup of my career. <laughs> Hello, dear. Hello. Bill, Bill, Bill. Who's the letter from? Alice? Hmm? I wasn't listening. I said, who's the letter from? Oh, Mother. Which one? Mine. Oh. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen, but it's all over now. Is it a rebate on your income tax or one of Donnie's comic books? <laughs> this is the stickiest, the gooiest letter I have ever read. What are you talking about? Wait till you hear. It seems that our marriage is crossing troubled, uncharted waters. It is? <laughs> yes, and this chap named Amesley is going to send us a compass. What, sir? <laughs> it's a figure of speech, his own. I'm supposed to remember that you're just as beautiful as the day I married you. Just as in need of consideration. Just as desirable. I'm supposed to bring home presents and little surprises. Never let the feeling of courtship fade away. Mm, I think that's sweet. <laughs> it is. It's gooey. I like sweet things. Hmm? I think Mr. Ainsley is absolutely right. Oh, he is, huh? Well, read that part about being preoccupied, about not listening when your marriage partner's talking. Read that. Hmm? Wait a minute, dear. I'm still on the part about the presents and little surprises. Oh, I think this is a wonderful letter. Now, you listen to me, Alice Henderson. Oh, well, I don't agree with everything in the letter, dear, but now let me ask you. Let me ask you, who sent our names into this matrimonial magician? Well, I didn't. A member of your bridge club, perhaps. Or maybe you're going around saying we're incompatible. Harry Henderson, I never said such a thing in my whole life, and you know it. Well, I never even thought it. Until now. Uh, uh, Miss Alice, dinner's about ready. I don't believe I care for any dinner. Thank you, Beulah. I'll be in my room. Somebody sent in our names. Probably one of your humorous friends. They always think of the funniest things. Beulah, would you do me a favor? Anything, Mr. Harry. Would you make up the guest room? That is, if I'm even a guest in this house? Uh, uh, Mr. Harry, 
About that letter you Don't see. even mention the letter to me. I'd like to get my hands on a jerk who sent our names into that matrimonial quack. Uh, Mr. Harris... I hope it's some satisfaction to whoever did it to know that it's probably broken up our marriage. We'll be back with Beulah in just a minute. Miss Alice, I'm writing a letter to Mother, Beulah. Miss Alice, I want to say something to you. Yes, Beulah. Beulah! I got two weeks and two days' salary coming to me. I are you leaving us? You know I'd never do that. But the suitcase, where are you going? But you're going to fire me, Miss Alice. Fire you? And I don't blame you the tiniest mite. And I ain't going to ask for no references either. But why am I going to fire you? Well, on account of a letter. Bill, you wrote... Oh, you can forget them two weeks and two days. I, I'll leave quietly. Bill, yes, Miss Alice? Put your suitcase down. Yes, ma'am. You send in our names? Yes, Miss Alice. But why? Well, I thought I saw symptoms of a crack-up. You know, Mr. Harry pecking you on the cheek and you not listening when he talks and, and he not wanting to take you out at night. Well, of course, I could be wrong. Maybe those symptoms are there, Beulah. Alice, you get more beautiful every day. Oh, Harry! <laughs> Harry! Here, open up. Nothing very expensive, mind you. Oh, how lovely. Harry Henderson. What? Here. Hmm? You didn't do this because you wanted to. You did it because it said so in the letter. Well, I did it. What difference does it make? A great deal. Doing it doesn't count. It, it's, it's wanting to do it. And you didn't want to. I'm sorry I ever did it. So am I. We've got better flowers than that in the backyard. And I don't care what's in your silly box. If you've got money to throw away, the town is simply rocking with end-of-the-month sales. The flowers? The present, and the letter. And then Baldwin saw the scintillating myriad of lights dancing gaily in Valerie's eyes. Is this beautiful, Miss Alice? Yes, Beulah. And it has a lot of good common sense, too. But I don't think Mr. Harry would ever agree. Baldwin balked like a mule, too. When may I expect dinner, Beulah? Presently, Mr. Harry. Presently. Why don't you go take a crack at him, Miss Alice? Well, uh, maybe it would sound better coming from a disinterested party. <laughs> Meaning me, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll try. <laughs> Mr. Harry, about you and Miss Alice being kind of cool towards each other. Yes, Beulah. Well, nobody knows when the frost gets on their love. They don't know whose fault it is, or, or if it's anybody's fault. Yes, Beulah. Uh, the, same, the same thing happened to Baldwin and Valerie. Hmm? Who were they? Uh, two people I read about. Mr. Ames. Amesley? Oh, his two story about two living people. It's beautiful, Mr. Harry. Just beautiful. Baldwin and Valerie got married again. And so what's that got to do with us? I suppose if two people are divorced, they can always try to get together again. Oh, but they didn't get no divorce. They got married again exactly like the first time. Oh, a reenactment. Like cops with a suspect at the scene of a murder. Oh, ridiculous. Oh, don't say that, Mr. Harry. Please, Mr. Ames. The man that wrote this true story said going through the motions and hearing the marriage words again was just the spark needed to ignite 
the flame of love. No, Beulah. No. Definitely no. Come on, Mr. Harry. Stand up. marrying clothes. It's nice to get a lot of use out of them. <sighs> Miss Alice, that's the dress, all right. You're just as pretty as the first time. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Oh, let me see the picture. I don't know what I'd have done without it, just like you had, exactly as before. Uh, <laughs> Ma, what part do I play in this wedding? Uh, uh, How about Flower Girl? Oh, Harry. Now, come on, and don't bother the folks. Buell will find a job for you downstairs. Come on, baby. <laughs> well. Harry, the watch Mother gave me was my something new, but it doesn't run, so shall I use it as my something old and wear something else something new? Take a look at someone blue. Well, it'll be all right, dear, as soon as you get your dress shirt and your collar and your cravat and your waistcoat on. Under this? Well, take off your undershirt. What's that? The front doorbell. Oh, if anyone gets in, if anyone gets a look at that living room, now, gets Harry, a look at me. Now, Harry, just relax. Bula will take care of everything, and it's probably only the minister. Minister? Shh. Goodness. Oh, here's all right, Adele. Who is it? Mother. Which one? Both. Oh, Alice Henderson, you promised me that... Harry! Harry, I didn't invite them, really I didn't. But, well, Baldwin and Valerie had both their parents at their second wedding, so I suppose Beulah thought... Beulah! That... Yes, dear, but don't blame Beulah. You know how she is about details, and I told her that I wanted everything exactly the same. So she went by this picture and... Oh! Oh, George! George? Yes, you know, oh, George. Like saying, oh, shucks. Dear sweet Alice, oh, always my favorite Alice. daughter. Let me look at my you. My great big boy. You haven't changed my, I do dear. believe you're getting bigger. <laughs> Listen, why don't you two mothers go on downstairs while Harry and I get dressed? Well, do hurry. I have just time to sandwich the ceremony in before my visit to Aunt Martha. But you just got here. I know, but my plans were all made. I've got to catch the train, so hurry. Yes. Yeah. All right, Mother. Oh, shucks. Which is another way of saying, oh, George. Now, Harry, remember the ball. Oh, Mommy, baby. Oh, George, George. Oh. Put me down, George. Oh, I love it, baby. Alice, your best man is back. Oh, yes, it, isn't it nice that Harry and I are getting married again? <laughs> baby, Alice, I'd marry you every day. What gives? No stag party? Well, uh, remember Fifi? Luscious, lovely Fifi. Fifi? Fifi who? Oh, oh, oh. Fifi, uh, that was our song. Fifi, luscious, lovely Fifi. Uh, Nobody knows the trouble I've seen, but it's all 
and it now. Bill, stop that slamming that door. Where's the minister? Oh, he ain't ready yet. He ain't ready? Why, I... Oh, no, don't worry, baby. He's duty-bound into Paris. He'll be over as soon as possible. Oh, dear. And everything was going so smooth. Well, what do you know? Hey, girls, you ever bet the bang tails? The what? The bang tails, the ponies, the races. Here's a hot hunch. Do it again and the third. Do it again? Yes, like Alice and Harry. Do it again. It's a cinch. Well, should we? I've never bet on a horse race before. <laughs> well, neither have I, but I I'll bet a dollar if you will. Oh, of course. Jump on it, girls. I've got a phone in the bet. They're off and running at 244. 244? Oh, my train. Oh, son. Alice. Beulah, my train. Remember, I've got to get to Aunt Martha's. Yes, and your train. If they're going to do it again and want me to watch, they'll have to hurry. Oh, the preacher ain't here and the train is leaving. What am I going to do? No. No good. <sighs> Donnie! Oh, Donnie! That's all right, Nick. I haven't anything to do. I'll hold on. You give me the call. If do it again wins, put it on half fun in the fifth. They're almost ready. They're at the post and acting up. Waterfalls on the trail. Start the, the music, path. Bill. Start the music. Here they come. They're off and running. At the corner pole. <laughs> words again, sure fixed up the Hendersons. Wasn't it beautiful, Bill? Just beautiful. Uh-huh. Particularly the way Donnie read those words. Beulah, baby. Yes, Bill? We've been courting for years. Yes, I know, Bill. Don't you think it's time we got married? But with one little proviso. Anything, Bill. Anything. Donnie's got to do the hitching. But... But he's not old enough to make it legal, Bill. He's got a couple of years of present schooling, four years of high schooling, four years of college. And if he has a leaning towards preaching, then there's more years of schooling. Worth waiting for, baby. Oh. <sighs> 